thanks so much, guys, for the intro. I actually asked them to play Hotline Bling, but they kind of weren't down with that. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to thank you for having me at your campus today to speak to your community as one of your own. My dad always told me that to be successful in anything in life, you have to be so hungry that you can taste it. And I always kind of knew that I thought what this meant. You can be whoever you want to be, do whatever you want to do. You can achieve anything you have the imagination and drive to pursue. But is this still the case with young people today? If you're sitting in the audience and you have some passion and some ideas, how do you go about translating that into a tangible impact? In second year, I found myself interning for an environmental not-for-profit where I thought I found my dream job. I pretty well wanted to be Marshall from How I Met Your Mother, so I thought it was a pretty good fit. And in that role, I was asked to audit their national environmental leadership program and recommend some solutions on how to make it better. And so I went out and consulted the feedback of 300 former interns that went through that program. And I was astounded by what they had to say to me. They told me two outstanding things. Number one, that they wanted to make an impact beyond the job description. And number two, that they wanted to feel a part of something bigger than themselves. They wanted to feel a part of a community. As well in that role, it was my responsibility to go to different conferences and look for new forms of sponsorship. And at the Salesforce Toronto conference that year, I got to hear an innovation panel, and one of the panelists stood out more than any of the other corporate executives. They just stood there and talking about corporate strategy and bold ideas. No, this man had a fire in his eyes, and his words would stick with me forever. Jordan Banks, the CEO of Facebook Canada, said, any time I need some talent to do what others can't, I head down the road to Waterloo and grab myself some rock stars. Sorry, Scarborough. <laughs> we need more young people in Canada to take their moonshots. Immediately to Jordan's left was another man, Bruce Poontip, who at 23 years old founded one of the world's largest adventure travel companies in G Adventures. 25 years later, G Adventures is worth over a billion dollars and remains located in Canada. That is moonshot thinking. But I want you to remember Bruce because he keeps coming back in this story. And so everywhere I went in Canada, it became very apparent to me that Canadian youth are no less ambitious, intelligent, or resourceful as those in the United States. They simply lack the resources to actually go out and do something with them. And everywhere I went across Canada, I was learning about people that were making a difference or wanted to make a tremendous impact. It started with a man named Connor at Georgian College in Orillia, who wanted to manufacture a line of fitness apparel, but didn't know where to start. Three high school students in Cambridge, Ontario, Brad, Ted, and Tibor of Help and Changing Minds Creative, founded an organization that filmed documentaries about homelessness, but then rallied their high school in order to actually give out handouts and improve the local community there. And Samia, a Kenyan girl, dreamed about implementing water conservation projects in her communities. And so everywhere I went, I was hearing these amazing stories of these young people that wanted to make a difference and take their moonshots. But the reality is, in Canada, we're actually not. Mayor Nenshi recently mentioned that we operate as a resource-based economy, and for so long this has been the case. But do we have the imagination and the willpower to translate it into a knowledge-based one like Prime Minister Trudeau suggests that it can be. If you look at the economics, they're pretty bleak. Oil is going below $27 a barrel. Our dollar is slipping below 70 cents US. Youth unemployment is rising to levels we haven't seen since 2008. And people are living off borrowed money now more so than ever before. Innovation panelists tell me all the time that the reason young people don't pursue things is because of a fear of failure. And it's really, really unfortunate when I hear this because it's such a load of crap. Young people aren't afraid of failing. It's about overcoming the numerous economic barriers to get to the moonshot. And let's take a look at those. According 
to EY's Youth Job Creation and Entrepreneurship Survey in 2015, the top six barriers to youth fulfilling their entrepreneurial ambitions are lack of access to funding, negative economic factors, competition, and these are really big macro level problems that you and I can't begin to address today. But number four, five, and six, we certainly can and we must. Number four, lack of access to good advice. Number five, lack of self-belief. And number six, limited internships. These are things that we can do something about. And number five is especially troubling for me because what this says is that one in four of you in the audience today won't act on your ideas simply because you don't believe. And if you don't believe, then how can we even begin to take our moonshots? Furthermore, only 34% of entrepreneurs worldwide are mentoring young people, while 28% of business leaders say that there is a significant gap in specialist, technical, and soft skills. So the result is, as a country, we are falling further behind others, especially when it comes to mentorship, the provision of university and business incubators, as well as entrepreneurship clubs and associations. So why is this the case, and what can we do about it? Number one, we create an environment that doesn't promote creativity and individuality. Yes, we go to university to get an education, but what do we actually learn? Yes, you learn course material and how to interact in teams and how to deliver under pressure to meet deadlines. But university should be a time where you get to explore different industries, figure out what you like and what you don't like, how you can leave your mark in the real world and actually get the opportunity to see what kind of problems you want to go out and solve, or at least have the opportunity to. We can't just be producing cookie-cutter graduates with results-oriented professional resumes in hand. And one school that's starting to understand this, and understand that it starts about exposing our youth to entrepreneurship at an even earlier age, is Royal St. George's College in Toronto, Ontario where 13 and 14 year old grade nine students have venture creation and community impact projects embedded into their curriculum this year. And while it may be unrealistic to believe that any of these will go anywhere, if one or two of these students end up pursuing entrepreneurship in the future because of this, then it would have been definitely worth it. Number two, we don't create inclusive, effective communities. I'm constantly amazed by the number of nonprofits and entrepreneurial organizations that don't understand how to build loyalty and increase volunteerism. And this is because they forget the central rule of business, which is it is all about how you make people feel. I want to repeat that. It is all about how you make people feel. If you give youth the opportunity to easily enter your community, build a relationship with them, and allow them to contribute in their own unique way, then and only then will you gain their loyalty and trust. And the only way we can build more effective communities and actually have more young people want to get involved in entrepreneurship is if no idea and no young person goes unsupported in our communities. And it's important because if you feel a part of your community, you're three times more likely to go on and actually make an impact. And number three, we focus far too much on the idea itself. How many of you, just say I, think that Starbucks is an excellent business? I, is that it, really? I. Well, in 1986, when Howard Schultz was going around to pitch Starbucks, over 222 investors said no. They thought it was a terrible idea and they wouldn't invest but it didn't matter because Howard found the eight people that would. And today, Starbucks is worth over $16 billion. Sounds like a pretty good business idea, am I right? In 1976, a young man by the name of Sylvester Stallone was going around pitching a movie about a young up-and-coming boxer that challenged the odds and took on the heavyweight champion of the world. And while a lot of people know about Rocky, what you might not know is that Stallone had to pitch over a thousand directors who said no to him. He ended up living in poverty and actually ended up having to sell his dog just to get one more day 
to convince someone of his idea. But he found the two directors that were willing to take the chance. And in 1976, Rocky grossed over $330 million. So you see the trend. All of a sudden, we find ways why ideas won't work as opposed to why they will. But you can't listen to the people that tell you that your ideas are garbage because these people are historically wrong. You should only listen to the feedback and advice of people that are willing to invest in you and increase your probability of success. Because those investors didn't invest in Starbucks or Rocky, they invested in Howard Schultz and Sylvester Stallone. They realized that 90% of any idea actually lies in you. So what I want you to know is that if you're sitting in the audience today and you have some passion and some ideas, you are not alone. There is an entire community, young and old, experienced and inexperienced, that wants to help you increase your chances of success. And one of these people for me was Bruce. Immediately after hearing him speak, I picked up his book, Loop Tale, which totally changed the way I looked at business. In his book, he talks about how if you can find your passion, put it towards a purpose, pay it forward to others, and transcend your industry, then you're capable of achieving incredible happiness and success in whatever you want to do. And I believed in this so much that I lent my copy of Loop Tale to the people closest to me and asked them to sign the front. I would then tweet those responses to Bruce. And sure enough, we developed a long-lasting friendship and mentorship. And Bruce would go on to connect me to resources, people in his company that could help me, and make time to hear out my ideas and try to help increase my probabilities of success. But equally as important as people like Bruce are, are other young people that think and believe in the same things as you do. And these people are often super available and want to pay it forward to you with their unique skill set. For example, Chase and Matt from Waterloo, Ontario founded a company called Poet Retail. Chase and Matt would go on to create wireframes for us when we had no idea how to approach user experience design. The three help boys, Brad, Ted, and Tibor, would go on to film a promotional video for us, something that would have cost us thousands of dollars to do otherwise. Some people on your journey might actually believe so strongly in what you're doing that they want to come with you. And such was the case when I met Jake, a first-year student at Western University who I just happened to meet at a DECA conference. Jake would go above and beyond to do what a first year I thought could do and became a leader of community development. You might also find some people sitting in this very lecture hall that want to do something with you and embark on a venture, a lot like Jack did, who helped organize this very event, building software for us that we could have never dreamed of building. So what I want you to know is that this is the first step of bringing your ideas to life, finding other people that you can trust, that believe in what you're doing so much that they want to help you. Number two is you have to figure out what kind of impact you want to make. And it's okay to start small with something leadership or community-based because you're going to build invaluable skills, build self-confidence, and build the credibility that you'll need to tackle a greater impact project later. Secondly, it's important to do something that you're passionate about, something that you can see an improvement in, or something that frustrates you. Because if you're a subject matter expert, you're gonna know what to do, and you're gonna be less prone to making common mistakes. I wanna let you know that not everybody has to be Zuckerberg, and not everybody has to build an app. Stay true to the impact that you want to make. And then lastly, in the words of Bruce, is to do big, small things. Identify the milestones and the barriers that you're gonna have to overcome 
and put all your energy, focus, and resources towards overcoming those. It's not going to happen overnight. But if we can create a community whereby each individual and every idea is supported, then we can slowly transition into a knowledge-based economy for Canada. And so on the one-year anniversary of my company and the 25th anniversary of G Adventures, I found myself at their VIP gala. And I was blown away by the people, culture, and innovations behind the G Adventures brand. It was aspirational and authentic. And what surprised me the most was that the people that I saw in front of me were a direct representation and reflection of everything that Bruce had believed in when he was 23 years old, sitting in seats that you occupy today. I also had the opportunity of meeting Delphine, pictured above, a brave Amazon warrior and Bruce's first mentor. I so badly wanted to ask Delphine one question that I managed to slip and talk my way into the VIP area where I had the opportunity to ask him my question. And I asked Delphine, what did you see in Bruce that made you know that he would come back and fulfill his promise of investing in your village through tourism and community development? And Delphine told me that when he first met Bruce, he could look into his eyes and he saw an honest young man who genuinely wanted to make a difference. And he had such a fire and determination and honesty in him that he knew he was a man of his word. Delphine saw the 90%. And so if you're a young person in the crowd today and you want to make an impact or you have some ideas, I want you to leave today reiterating again that you are no less intelligent, resourceful, or opportunistic as other young people worldwide. But ideas are no good in your head. You have to take small actions to bringing them to life. And this quote I saw when I visited Harvard Business School, and I want to leave it with you today. And it says that students should know that there are special moments that pull everything we have learned into focus. When theory, practice, experience, and talent all come together to one sharp point, action. When it's no longer about what can be done, but what each and every one of you will do. So go do it. Thank you. <laughs>